Hello and welcome everyone to yet another conversation on NLP exploration and so much more. Today, I'm really, really excited to be here with uh, Tabiso, who's, who's I've known for such a long time. Uh, I consider him to be one of my friends and such a such an amazing, amazing human being. Uh, he is an NLP trainer and a coach and uh, works from South Africa, but has an impact all over the world. Uh, he is also an international ambassador for ANLP for South Africa uh, and just just a top-notch amazing human being uh, with such a such a powerful story uh, that brought him to NLP uh, and I, I really feel that he taps into that to really create huge impact. Uh, I'll leave the story bit uh, for him to share. Uh, because I think he would share it in a much more associated and powerful way. Uh, but uh, yeah, so really excited. Thank you so much, Tabisa, to be here with us. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the conversation today. And also for those of you who are already joining, who are who will be joining in some time, uh, just a few ground rules. Please feel free to have conversations, say hi to us, ask any questions that you have up to me. Uh, to Tabiso about what we are speaking about the uh, summit, anything, please feel free, put it in the comment and uh, we will take time out to answer all of those questions with you. But for now, uh, off to you, uh, Tabiso. So maybe would you like to give a little bit of quick introduction and share a little bit about your story uh, with everyone? Sure, what an honor. I mean, after the intro you gave me, I'm just thinking, <laughs> how do I even beat that? Um, but thank you so much um, for such a lovely, lovely um, introduction. And and indeed, I think ever since we've met, we, we've, we've, we've really grown a lot in the field. And, and I think um, the relationship has gone beyond work. Um, you know, I feel we have grown closer to each other. I'm able to tap in and just check with you and ask for advice and, and, and vice versa. But in terms of what has led me into into NLP, you know, um, I think uh, I, I maybe let me start the story in this way. I, I grew up with a fear of speaking in public, and I remember. I mean, I was, it's, it's actually quite funny. I was just I had a reunion um, maybe two weeks ago with with my high school friends, and they're like, "Wow, Toby, so you know, you're like this top notch speaker um, all over the world." Um, we want you to give us a motivational talk. This was our 10-year reunion. So I'm like, what? <laughs> so I, and, and it was quite nice for me to actually stand in front of them with confidence and poise and, and speak as freely as I did. Um, contrary to back in Standard 7, you know, when my parents took me to, to one of the most expensive schools in Limpopo, and, and yet um, I stood there speaking about something I really love so much, something I'm really passionate about. But in that moment, I was not comfortable. I was not enjoying myself. I was instead shaking. You know, my hands were sweating, even though I was I was hot. Um, I mean, it was cold. You know, um, I remember even in that moment, um, my tongue dried up and it thickened. My heart started pounding. But I thought, nobody can see any of this. Wujisha. <laughs> which is just a South African word that means ask. In that moment, in that moment, my voice began to tremble and the secret yeah. was out of the bag. Long story short, I spent my entire life hiding that fear that I had, you know, so that I can just fit in. I bunked lessons and so forth. And, and going into the career I chose, I chose psychology because I realized I really want to make an impact in people's lives. However, I can't do it in front of people. At least one-on-one, -on -one, I'm able to do it. And through doing that, I ended up in psychology, studied psychology, started working with people with mental health and addiction problems. And in there, that's when I bumped into NLP because I realized that, yes, I'm making an impact in one person, but I want to be able to do with what I'm doing with one person with a whole lot more people. And... NLP came in as something that I felt, you know what, how can I just bump up my level? I didn't even think it was something that was going to help me overcome my, my fears and whatever. I just thought, I just want to improve my skill level so I'm able to just have more impact. And boy, oh boy, 
NLP made the difference that makes the difference. After that, I launched my company, my public speak, my motivational speaking company. And I started, I managed to, to get a job as a lecturer. I, who would have thought, you know, I worked as a lecturer, lecturing in abnormal psychology um, at SACAB. And, and, and I've just grown, you know, it's just grown internationally. Now I'm speaking internationally um, and I speak for a living. I mean, that still sounds surreal. I mean, you know, when I meet people who are like, are you sure that you had this fear of speaking in public? You know, um, I'm like, boy, oh boy, best believe that this was something that I would cringe at any opportunity to speak. You know, same with my classmates. They really couldn't believe that this is the same time you saw. But one thing I've, I've, I've realized is in life, um, life will continue throwing the same challenges that allow you to have the same experiences until you learn the lessons that you need to learn. And, and, and I think NLP has given me the opportunity to reflect and go through my journey and learn the lessons that have made me the type that I am. You know, um, people uh, ask, why do you love the term Wuchisha so much? Um, but a friend of mine asked me one day, you know, um, if you could change anything in your life that you went through, what is it that you would change? And I reflected and I thought, hmm, actually nothing. I realized that everything that has happened in my life, good or bad, has made me the person that I am today. It has given me the wisdom that I have and I would not change anything. Then they said, if you could give that a sentence, a phrase or something to describe all of that. And the only word that came up was wuchisha. Wuchisha, ask, ask and you'll understand. Ask and you'll understand. And, and that's really the term that resonates with my journey, with my life, with who I am. I'm nothing but a mystery, not only to other people, but to myself, because I realize that I am the territory and I continue to learn more about myself as I expand my map of the world. And I've dedicated my life to helping others expand their map of the world. Oh, that's brilliant. That's amazing. Amazing. I mean, such a such an amazing underlying principle with when you said that, you know, when your friend asked you about what would you change and you said nothing. Uh, it's such, it's such a powerful thing, very simple thing, but such a powerful thing that it sort of resonates with this idea that no matter where you are, what you're doing, who you are, what's going on in your life, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. Because it's all leading up to something. It gives you something. You're going to learn from it. You're going to experience something. But just having that belief that no matter where you are, it's okay. Such a, such a powerful place to all operate from. It's okay. It's okay. As it is, you know. And you, you're absolutely right, um, Nishat. You know, I think, you know, when you put it in that way, it, it, it's, for me, I was looking at it in hindsight. You know, in hindsight. Um, but when, when you put it that way, I think it's even more powerful if I not only apply that in hindsight, but also in the present moment. You know, I think it just, it really just shapes things and, and, and makes me look at just where I am and what is happening as it unfolds with just curiosity and fascination, you know? Um, so yeah, where I am is exactly where I need to be and where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, that sort of is, uh partly to the structure of acceptance. Uh, I mean, I've done, I've done, I've, I've modeled acceptance from so many people, and this is one of the things that comes up all the time. Uh, and it, it is the structure that no matter where you are, uh, it's where you're supposed to be. And that's acceptance. Uh, exactly. exactly. Right there. Just accepting, you know, I was thinking the same thing <laughs> as yeah. you're saying it. So, so you, you hit the money on, on, on the, on the head, you know, um, exactly that it's just getting to that point of just accepting um but accepting while knowing that i am still you know a person you know i love this thing that in every moment we're making three decisions you know do i accept what is happening um do i ignore what is happening or do i change what is happening if i cannot accept it if i cannot ignore it you know um, while at the same time, I know that there's certain things that maybe um, are meaningless and, and, and really do not influence my life in the direction that I wanted to go 
while I'm doing the things that enable me to go there. So I'm constantly in that moment where I'm embracing mm -hmm. everything that is happening to me that I cannot change and I'm accepting it mm -hmm. as it should be, but I'm focusing on the things that I want, the things that I want to happen. Mm -hmm. oh. Great. And if we, if we look at the same paradigm and shift the perspective uh, and think about more practical and realistic things in life, what would that look like? If we look at more practical things in terms of that particular paradigm, yeah. um, I think I'm thinking right now, well, I guess it's, it's probably leading us to, to the presentation um, and, and the reason behind the, the, the presentation, which for me is, um, you know, the Disney model with a twist. I think, I think the idea is, is, is that NLP is largely based on modeling. Yeah. You know, it's, it's largely based on modeling. And, mm. uh, and, and I love this, the sense that the Disney model was created by modeling somebody else, you know, and, and we are constantly learning and modeling other people. What I love about NLP is that it has given us the structure and the strategy to model that which we want to learn because many of us find ourselves having learned things from people around us that are not even helping us grow, that are not even helping us prosper um, or achieve the things that we want to achieve. And, and, and this, pro this process for me, if, if I have to bring it to accepting that which I cannot change um, and being able to identify the things that I can change, um, but also having the courage to change the things that I, I want to. I guess for me, that for me associates with that part that exists in all of us, that part that exists in all of us, which is that part of us, that the creative part, that part of us that allows us to be creative and think about the ideas that we've come up with, whether it is that moment when you're thinking of what name to give your child, or that moment when you thought about the name to give your company, or that moment when you decided to go and play and just do something that you've never done before. You know, it, but it's, it's just accessing that part of you that has allowed you to come up with those ideas that have, have come up in your life. And, and the process, the Disney model for me is centered around that. Um, and it's centered around modeling, from modeling um, uh, Walt Disney, you know, um, Robert Dills discovered that, you know, um, he had three different states that he came up with. He, you know, he showed up as three different people, you know, um, that, and that's what enabled him to build the massive empire that, he, that he's built in, in, you know, Disney World and everything and in the cartoon business. But with all of that, he was able to, to tap into that creativity, that creative part of him, and that's what enabled him to, to navigate through those three different parts, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. um, using th uh, these three different states. And that's, that's what I really, I think, if, if I say in the person that I am right now, who embraces where I am and who's just curious about the territory and expanding my map, it is the Disney model that I associate very highly with. But now, um, in the sense that, you know, Walt Disney would show up the one time as this dreamer, you know, this guy that just was just had this all, all these amazing dreams, you know, all these amazing ideas and anything was possible. And he just anything he could do, be and have anything in that moment. And I'm just imagining Walt Disney showing up at work. And, you know, it's like this crazy guy was just dreaming and just saying, what else? What else is possible? What else? You know, and, and, and I think in that state, many of us in our normal lives have a tendency of actually killing that dream mm. before even testing it out, killing that dream before we even put it out there to see if it actually could be possible, simply because of what reality has mm. taught us is possible. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about my journey, you know, um, to, 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 to winning the, the ANLP um, Inspiration Award in the sense that when, when, when I sat in there, I tapped into my creative part and, and I remember I said, I'm sitting in a plane flying from Spain to England. And as I look out the window, I look out the window and you know that view where you're just above the clouds and you see that blue there. And as I'm sitting there, my wife calls me 
And she's like, wow, Tavi, so I'm just amazed. Social media is going crazy about the, the two talks that you've just given in, 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 in Barcelona and in Madrid. Um, I'm so proud of you and I love you so much. And as I'm sharing that, I'm like, thank you. You know, as we talk in there, um, we start talking, our two little boys come onto the screen and we share about, and I tell her, look, I'm just going to London to meet with, with some, some um, colleagues in NLP. Nishit, mm. I am not yet married. I don't have any children. Mm. I'd never been on a plane out of South Africa. I, and, and the planes that I've been on, there's no connectivity on the plane. You can't have internet access while you're on a plane. Mm -hmm. I'd never been to the UK or whatever. Six months later, I get an invite to the NLP Awards. Today, as we speak, I now have colleagues in the UK. I guess those two talks in Spain, Barcelona and Madrid are still happening, are still going to happen. When I flew to London, the first time I realized you can have access to Wi-Fi, <laughs> I could not believe it. I literally, I was on WhatsApp messaging everyone saying, listen, I am sending this text from the A. Can you believe it? I just want you to know. <laughs> but it, it was like 2 a.m. at that time. And I was like, somebody wake up. I just want to talk to you. <laughs> but but that's the that's the... You know, if, if I had stuck to what is real, to what is real, I would have mm. denied myself the possibility of that dream even materializing. I would have not even allowed myself to dream it, you know, mm. because I believe that we experience, um, we achieve things twice in life, in our minds and in reality. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's been the journey. And, 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 and I guess I relate that to, to, to the Disney model where he says, okay, you drop as the dreamer, and then the one, then then one day he'd show up as the realist who's now mm -hmm. sorting out everything. He wants you to sort out everything and and just do do a SWOT analysis on this dream that you have. You know, um, I can almost see this guy that's now serious. He shows up now serious and probably in a suit, whereas maybe the day before you would have probably showed up in in sh short sandals, or whatever, um, sunglasses, uh, you know, whatever. But but that's what I'm seeing. And then the one time, then he would come in and show up as this critic. Who's there now to come and see what's important, what's not important? Um, criticize this this dream, and and see if this dream is able to stand the test of time. To stay, just you know, to go through all these challenges that it might face, and that's the process um, that this presentation I will be doing is largely based around. Obviously, it comes with a twist. It comes with a twist, and 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 and. When we say it comes with a twist, Nishit, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I, it, it just simply reminds me, the book Frogs to Princess speaks mm. about us using NLP to get us into the groove. I might be misquoting it, but something about that. Getting, using NLP to get into dancing with life, you know? And, and, and the twist for me just reminds me of the song. I don't know if you know this song, um, but there's this song, oh, let's twist the game. Like we did last summer. Oh, do you know the song? No, I don't. I don't. Oh my goodness! Don't worry. I'll be playing that song. I will definitely be playing that song at the conference. So then, yeah. and you know, at the global summit, I'll definitely be playing it. And and I think we'll just have fun into that as we access this because there's a twist in that, but also it's quite practical. So it's not where you know the normal Disney model where you are imagining and and you know getting into this dreamer state and but this is quite practical it's a practical way of you accessing your 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 subconscious mind and i believe the subconscious mind is where information from our conscious mind information from our unconscious mind comes in to meet and in the that's where the party happens when you have all this creativity you know so 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 this is a process that that hopefully I'm hoping that people will take out that creativity is not something that is out there. Creativity is not something that you open from a tap that, that, that sometimes just coughs and coughs and coughs 
sometimes blows gas and air, not normally flowing. Creativity is something that is inside of you. Yeah. And you can tap and connect with that source of creativity, a tap that constantly flows, mm. flows, and flows. It's amazing. Uh, this reminds me of one of the metaphors that I learned from Michael Neal quite earlier. And he uses this in a very similar way, where he says that as humans, we, we have this unlimited fountain of creativity within us. Uh, and we just need to tap into that fountain. We just have to take our glass, pour it under the fountain, and and have it. And uh, and that's 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 really amazing as well. Because one of the things about what people associate with Disney, uh, what Disney is, that creativity, all that all that stuff that he creatively create creatively created uh, uh, from the beginning. And what's, what's one of the things that really stands out for me specifically from a Disney model point of view uh, is this idea that we play all three roles, but we play all three roles differently. Because uh, more often than not, what tends to happen is that someone's getting into this creative space and still in the process of building this vision they have this idea and they think about okay so here's what i'm gonna do and before they even let it formulate a critic will come in and stop that idea so they haven't really then fully uh formed their uh, their vision yet they haven't tested it they haven't even gone to realist yet and they go like oh no but this can't go wrong oh no this doesn't work oh what if i fail oh what if this doesn't work and then uh but having these different roles to play in and to really go into this place that if you're being you if you're stepping into one role where you're just creating then you just create and that's it there will be time for realist and there'll be time for critic but it's not today not now you're just creating and and so on for different roles and that's that to me stands out but i'm very very intrigued i'm clearly i'm assuming you're not gonna talk about what the twist is now because for that i'm assuming the session's gonna happen uh but i'm really really intrigued about this idea of what you just shared about you creating this twist where it's practical but it's where your unconscious processes and allows you to tap into this creativity that's just absolutely brilliant i mean part of me really wants to ask more questions to you about that but then i feel like we'll end up doing the whole session here <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But you, you're right on the money there, um, in, in, the shit, in the sense that um, it, 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 we have these different roles and, and they exist inside of us, the, 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 the dreamer, the realist and, and um, the critic. Um, however, what if we could take you through a strategy, a step-by-step -step strategy that allows you to bring in these roles when they are supposed to come in? Because a lot of the time, as you are saying, the reason our creativity seems to be stunted is because we have these roles showing up at different times, at the wrong times, and, and we just need to, to, to schedule them. You know, I always say that the distractions in our lives are the things that we enjoy. The distractions in our lives are the things that we enjoy. We have a, this tendency of thinking that the distractions, the things that distract us are bad things, you know? Um, or, or things that, 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 that we don't really like and so forth. But they, they wouldn't distract us if we enjoyed them. And the same thing, you, these roles that show up, they don't show up because you don't enjoy them. We enjoy criticizing. We enjoy doing a SWOT analysis and sorting out certain things in our lives. We enjoy dreaming. This process just simply allows you to show up as a dreamer when you need to, when it comes to a particular idea that especially that you want to think creatively and unpack creatively show up as a realist when you need to so you can sort this dream out and show up as a critic so you can actually remove certain things that maybe might not be useful but step out of there with the message or the idea that you wanted to get out of that and that's what this process that's what the twist is all about how do I help you? And you know, well, there's a strategy that's in place to help you navigate through those different roles. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's also one of the most important things, right? 
the underlying learning that whoever you are, it kind of resonates with what we spoke about earlier in terms of acceptance. Uh, we spoke more in terms of context and place that wherever you are, it's fine. But now we're speaking also in terms of identity that whoever you are, it's fine. Even if you are a, even if you are a creative or visionary, that's fine. And even if you're a critic, that's fine. A lot of times, really funny thing, but this happens. I've seen this happen so often that people criticize themselves and then they criticize themselves for being a critic. And so it's like this vicious cycle of the criticizing themselves for being, it's just, but it's okay. Being a it's critic okay. is useful and being a realistic is useful. Right, everything. Whoever you are is perfect. You're you're just perfect the way you are. But from what you shared, that this model allows you to unpack who you need to be when you need to be. So it's sort of like this, just making sure that when you need to be visionary, this allows you to be visionary, and when you need to be critic, this allows you to be critic, and and so on. And of course, with a mystery creative twist as well, uh, for sure. Exactly, exactly. I think, you know, you, you, that's, that's just absolutely beautiful what you just said there, because I think I, 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 I often say there's this song which says Kure Kure, and it's, it says far, far. It just means far, far. Um, but, but this guy speaks about um, where he comes from is far away, and where he's going is far away. But, but exactly what you're saying, because as people, we have a tendency of giving us ourselves identities or labels as if they were final. You know, people will say, oh, I'm not creative. I'm not the creative type. And somebody say, yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm, I'm such a creative. Um, and, and unfortunately, the ones of some of us who say we are not creative or um, have given us this label, ourselves this label almost as if it's final, not forgetting that there are times in our lives in the past where we've been creative. And that part of you, that time where you're creative is still a part of you. That's still a part of your identity. I guess yeah. um, we, we, we need to start moving towards the sense that as people, we have many identities um, and, and start embracing that. Um, but I guess maybe since I come from a, a, um, a, a mental health background, we still have this issue with having many identities or multiple identities because then you could have... <laughs> You could be seen as somebody who's got schizophrenia or dissociative disorder or whatever it is. And and I guess maybe that's where, um, as people, we struggle to identify with the fact that we have different identi identities and we show up in different places, in different situations, um, and with, with all these different identities that exist within us. And it's okay. Every single one of them, I always say, nothing is good or bad in life. Yeah. You know, it's just the meaning that we give it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, for me, every time someone makes a statement, an identity, any statement for that matter, but specifically identity statement, uh, someone says that I'm creative, in my mind, I just go like, yes and no. Yeah, that's true and not true. And when <laughs> someone says, someone says I'm not creative, I still go yes and no. Yeah, that's true. Yes, you're not creative, maybe in this moment, but then you're creative in other moments. And so, uh, for that matter, I think anything that anyone says, it's true and not true at the same time. In that moment, yeah, maybe we can quantify. But overall, as a human being, as an identity, it's both. It's always both. And, it's always both. Context yeah. is everything. Context is yeah. everything. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. I guess um, that's, that's it's about this. This process is simply about helping people tap into that part of them, that context, that part of them, that identity of them that enables them to be creative. Oh, Mehek, I love it. Exactly. Accessing that flow state, but not just accessing the flow state, because I mean, if, if we stayed in the flow state, um, we would all be, you know, coming in here <laughs> and, and, and living in this fantasy world, you know. Um, yeah. But it's simply just about us embracing the fact that even though we can access that flow state, we need to kind of sort some of the things that, that we are able to, 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 to find in that flow state and then 
position them as we need to because still you know i still need to position myself i still need to have some sort of structure you know i always yeah. say um in as much as some of us um you know define that flow state and associated with being passionate passion in the wrong direction um can be quite a disastrous um endeavor you know yeah great excellent and so if if we were to kind of start uh wrapping this up but maybe by sharing that for those of for those of uh, uh those of the people who are interested in uh being part of the session what are, what are some of the outcomes that they can expect at the end of your session at the summit look i guess the most important thing is that i can advise people to come there with this process is a process that you can use i mean i've used this process to 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 be able to come up with certain talks that i've done i've used this process um i've had clients who've used this process to 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 write to come up with the structure of a book um the creativity for them to write a book i've used this process to to identify what is my purpose in life i've had clients who've used this process um or i've helped um clients to use this process to find out how they can grow their business from where it is to where they want to grow their business and and the nice thing is you are now going to have as a coach you will now have a model that you can go and use in the corporate space um and and knowing that your 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 executives will love this because it's something that is practical you know because there is still that resistance you know sometimes in the corporate space in terms of just imagining and they're like oh no 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 you, you're going to make us imagine things or what no 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 no, no. that that fairy stuff so you're able to get them to access that fairy and see fairy stuff that they don't like mm. um without them being aware that they're accessing that um so yeah you you will find you learn a new tool that will enable you to be able to work in the corporate space and apply the the disney model in a corporate space in a practical way in a way that is easy to understand think of an area in your life which you would like to unpack creatively and gain more insight about i mean i've got uh, my students um using this process to 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 really unpack um their coaching practices you know and and what i've really gotten out after that is um it just creates the sense of confidence and belief that this is really possible and 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 it helps provide a framework and a structure on how to go about achieving this and knowing also what is really important in that endeavor that you've just disney modeled no great brilliant i'm excited as always thank you i'm also excited looking forward to twist the game like we did yeah. last summer <laughs> <laughs> all right brilliant so this this was uh, this was interesting um such a powerful conversation uh and as it is as always is the case that we came in thinking about speaking about the the disney model in the session where we want went and spoke about uh, acceptance of identity and acceptance of behavior and context and everything and as like i said there is always such a yeah such an insightful way to look at life and look at the world so this has been absolutely brilliant brilliant it really is yeah. really was it really was i mean well looking at the presuppositions that come in with this is exactly that the map is not the territory but most importantly we have all the resources within us yes absolutely absolutely great brilliant so thank you thank you so much for taking the time out of you so and thank you everyone who's joined us today uh with amazing comments and and observations oh, yes. uh been with us yeah thank you thank you guys for taking the time out and just to kind of yeah. reiterate for those of you and for all the people who will see this later that uh currently we have the, our annual black friday sale going on so if you're thinking of buying the tickets for the summit now would be great time 20% off and then you can use the resource discount and you can make it 30% off so it's just amazing uh you can be as happy as the resource is yeah absolutely <laughs> so yes, yeah just, yeah yeah just just go to the website and if you're thinking about getting the tickets now will be the great time and as always this has been brilliant uh and we will probably see you next week with some more conversations 
uh, with some other facilitators who will keep you posted about it. And yeah, that's about it from my side. Anything that you would like to add, Savisa? Yes, from my side. Um, thank you, thank you. I see Ntisang, Coach Ntisang is there. Coach Linden, Linda um, is, is also there. Um, Coach Mehek, good to have you here as well. But also, I just wanted to really, really, um, you know, send this invitation to all the South African coaches out there. Um, I think this is really, really an amazing platform to really network, connect with the world of NLP, but also to gain insight that will help you really gain an abundance of tools, an abundance of talks. I mean, you, you literally could have um, leave here with ideas to go and facilitate more than 10 workshops with the insight that you'd really just gain out of this. So you're really, really just, just, just equipping yourself as a coach, as a speaker, as a facilitator, and also you're also getting to network, but play in the same space as some of the greats in the world. I mean, um, when I'm saying the greats in the world, I'm talking in our field, we're talking master trainers. You know, I'm talking to a master trainer right here. Um, um, but but you have, you know, the, the, the likes of master trainers who've been involved in the field of NLP ever since it has begun. If, if really we talk about learning from the source that is joining these kind of platforms for you to really just, you know, um, just equip yourself so that you are able to go out there and step with a sense of authority, knowing that you have learned from the best. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I agree. I mean, without the summit, you and I wouldn't have met. We wouldn't have had this conversation. So I, exactly. I mean, I've met some of the best people in this field and in life, just some of the best human beings uh, at the summit. So I absolutely love that aspect. I mean, it's what keeps me going in the morning. And like I said, to learn from the source. Uh, I mean, we have Frank Pacific this time. He was involved when NLP was being developed. It's just... Yeah, I'm really exactly. looking forward to it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Great, brilliant. So thank you. Thank you so much, Saviso. And thank you, everyone who's joined. And I will see you again next week. Same time. I don't know which day yet, but same time next week. I'll see you guys. Take care.